So I see here that you have an article about Bitcoin in Canada. What's yeah. going on? So it was really quite interesting, and this is big news in Canada. I don't know if this would be big international news because we're only talking about $250 million worth of Bitcoin compared to the trillions that are out there. Maybe it's billions. I don't know if they're at trillions yet. Uh, probably billions. But anyways, uh, what happened was there was a, a company called uh, Quadriga CX. I probably pronounced that wrong, but it's <laughs> out of British Columbia. And um, the owner died. And what the problem was is where everybody thought this was some big organization with, and it, it, they even called themselves uh, Canada's biggest cryptocurrency trader and the leading Bitcoin exchange in Canada. And everybody thought it was an exchange in a bank and it turns out to have been a 30 year old guy in his basement. Mm -hmm. So people were buying Bitcoins through this company, Quadriga CX. And um, then this guy ends out going to India and he dies of complications of Crohn's and with him goes all the passwords to the cryptocurrencies. So they call them the cold wallets. And uh, the way it was described, and I'm sure some of our listeners know more about cryptocurrency than I, but there's a hot wallet and a cold wallet. Mm -hmm. And the hot wallet is one that you have open and active, and it's kind of like a cash register when you've got a float of money. So the daily trading comes in and out of the hot wallet, and then you can transfer money from the hot into the cold, and cold wallets are usually like external drives that, or um, things that you can plug in. So you unplug it and nobody can hack it. Nobody could get into it because it's completely unplugged. You can put it in a lockbox, And then even if you have it and you plug it in, you'll still need a password. And it sounds like it's the passwords to these cold wallets that disappeared when this guy passed away. Oh no. Yes. So now there's $250 million worth of Bitcoin. That, Are you kidding? Even though Bitcoin is so low right now, there's that much money on it? Yes. Yes. Oh, so imagine no. what it would have been at its peak, right? So now there is some controversy around this. So why this is in the news right now, apparently this guy, his name is uh, Gerald Cotton, who passed away. Um, he was the chief executive officer, and it turns out he was the only officer, right? Because he was just some dude in his basement with a computer. I'm impressed that he's 30 and winning with money like that. Well, he was winning with other people's money. Right, right. OPM. Yeah, and so this is all in the courts. So all these people whose money is locked away in these cold wallets are suing the company and trying to get their money back. And the company is actually, so his executor, which is his wife, is claiming there are no passwords. I don't have $250 million to give out to all these people that we owe money to. And so it, it's basically they're filing for bankruptcy protection against their creditors, which are these people that lent money and bought cryptocurrency through this guy. Oh. So um, that's what's going on right now. And so now it's up to a court to say, okay, uh, is this like regular bankruptcy protection or do we treat it like a bank because this guy was claiming to be a bank, but he's not regulated like a bank. So that's where all the controversy is. And it gets even more controversial. So on Reddit, there's all kinds of people who, you know, they lost money. They're trying to figure out what's going on. It's usually the little bit more tech savvy people that bought into Bitcoin and they're claiming that they're seeing activity on these accounts of these cold wallets. It's still now, happening? Well, that's what they're claiming. Now, from my understanding of cryptocurrency, you shouldn't be able to see activity on these cold wallets because of the security of cryptocurrency, right? Like only right. the person with those passwords and with those cold wallets would or should know what's happening. So I'm Perhaps not sure they're talking about just the activity on a website. Maybe maybe he's not a solo person. Maybe there's somebody that controls the website and they're seeing that. Well, that's the concern. The concern is the this guy claiming that he died in India and they posted his death certificate. Oh. So they're looking at the death certificate and they're like, is this a real death certificate? I mean, this is India. Come on, right? But like, he's Canadian, right? 
Yeah, he's Canadian, okay. and he went to India to do humanitarian aid. And they're like, okay, this all just seems really weird. He just goes to India to do humanitarian aid and then happens to die of complications to Crohn's. There's no evidence of a body. The wife says he's dead, but there's no proof of a funeral, right? Like there's, it's just this death certificate. And is it a legit death certificate? And then they claim that they're seeing activity on these accounts. So is he really alive? Is he siphoning the money? You know, like what's going on? Is anybody investigating into this? So, um, and then it gets even more controversial. What? Yeah, it does. So this is. Now, is this true or not? This is what I'm reading on Reddit. So, of course, take it with a grain of salt. Okay. Right? And, and so how they got this information, I don't know. They say two weeks before his death, like before he goes off to India, he left a will. And in that will, he left a plane, two houses, and $100,000 to take care of his two chihuahuas. Right, so <laughs> it's like here, where does he it. live? Is this a Vancouver guy, Toronto? Where is this guy? Uh, from? He's Vancouver, know? yeah, okay. yeah, or around Vancouver. He's in British Columbia. So interesting that just before he dies, he sets up his will. So Dan, do you have a will, and is it all organized and set up? Um, no, I don't have a will, but I do have a Google Doc that will be sent to you and our other siblings. And, right, in case and something mom and happens. dad when I die, and it just basically yeah. has all my passwords to everything. And yeah, so that's yeah. kind of like a living will. I've got something similar. So you know, like the dude's thirty, right? Good on him for making a will two weeks before he dies, right? Like it's it's what's all suspicious around this, and why would he consider taking care of his chihuahuas and have that conversation, but not the conversation of oh by the way that two hundred and fifty million dollars worth of cryptocurrency? Here's the passwords. Right. Like that's kind of what's suspicious. And of course, people lost money. There's a lot of emotion involved. And, you know, people are like, I don't think he's dead. I think he's stealing her money. And, and well, to have a will for chihuahuas is ridiculous. <laughs> oh, yeah. But he's not the first one to have wills for chihuahuas. But it's still ridiculous. <laughs> it is ridiculous. So anyways, that's. That's what's going on here. Now, there was in the article I read on CBC News, uh, they interviewed a blockchain expert, and the guy's name is David Gerard, and I guess he wrote a, a bunch of books on blockchain and how it works, and, and this is what he says. With crypto, it's amateur hour. People assume there are active institutions that operate under rules and regulations, and they operate under very few. It's really hard to tell if a seemingly credible operator is just a guy in his basement. Well, yeah, because they're not going to call you on the phone. No. And if you're a bank, to be registered as a bank in any country, well, let's say Western country, you got to jump through hoops. It's really hard to do. You got to prove you're a bank. You got to prove your creditors. You've, you've got to register. Whereas cryptocurrency, right? This dude claimed to be the biggest guy in Canada, and he was just some dude in his basement, right? So anyways... Uh, you got to, it, it makes you wonder. And then there was a question that was asked and uh, this was actually not really a question. It was a point and I think it was very valid. This was in the comments at the bottom of the article. And there was a guy named Alex Reddy who said this, he says, you can't have it both ways. The whole point of crypto is to avoid the control of big brother. So when things go south, you can't expect Big Brother to come in riding to the rescue. So Big Brother will be the government. So, you know, some people are saying, well, we need to regulate cryptocurrency and we need to have government controls. And yeah, that's great. But the whole point of cryptocurrency is to avoid that kind of control. But now you're in this situation where because there's no oversight and rules and regulations. You just lose it all. Yeah. This, this guy's, even if they find the cold wallets, which they probably have without the passwords, that money's gone forever. So, well, here's the thing. When it comes to Bitcoin, not like our users are buying up a lot of Bitcoin right now. I mean, it's so cheap, mm -hmm. um, which is good and bad. I mean, if it goes back up, you'd be buying it at a deal. But I get the feeling it'll probably fall again. When you have Bitcoin, don't put it on an online wallet. Even if it's yeah. at a really good site that's reputable, download it. Put it on your own USB drive, because then if somebody dies, that this you know that blockchain company that you have your wallet on, 
you're not going to lose your money. I yeah. know it's it's more convenient to have it in the Control cloud. You're at work. Your you're at home. cold wallet, right? But there are a lot of people in the past who bought Bitcoin when it was like under a hundred bucks, and they put it on flash drives or hard drives or just left it on their computer and then forgot about it. And then they upgrade their computer or buy a new computer and they're like, oh man, it's worth eighteen grand. Where is that? Oh, right? Oh, like, I know. I know. But even yeah. like, think about Coinbase. So Coinbase is one of the biggest. Bitcoin places that people buy, um, also Binance. Those places you don't know what they are. Like, no, just, you have no clue. I mean, even if you did find that they have an address somewhere in San Francisco, I just wouldn't trust a big company like that because yeah. something crazy could happen. People could hack into their servers. I think you just need to have it physically somewhere. Just get organized, put it on a USB yep. drive, put it in your safe. The more you can control it yourself, the better. And put it in your safe. So you don't forget about it later when you upgrade your computer. Yeah. And, you know, it was interesting. They were interviewing a guy who had lost around $15,000, and which, you know, is pennies compared to, I'm sure, some of these other clients. And he was saying, look, I thought it was reputable. I researched the company. They had an address in Vancouver City, uh -huh. right? And it was a downtown address and it looked legit. Well, I had something very similar happen in the past when I invested in overseas markets and That's they right. had an address in London, England, and right. I Google mapped it and I called them and, you know, like they, it looked so legit and it was like smoke in the wind when they disappeared. Well, did I tell you when I first started my business here in Los Angeles, I just went to a mailbox store and was like, hey, can I use your address? And then for $50 for the whole year, I used their address, so I yep. could have put it up on my website, and you could have Google Street Mapped it and seen a big, a big building, you know. And you can post yeah. pictures which may not even exist, right? Yes, like there's yeah. all kinds of things you can do. So, and you know, when you're dealing with cryptocurrency, and maybe we'll get some angry comments on this, you're not dealing like the, the history of it and the people who've used it in the past have always been a little shady. Right? Like if somebody's going to put ransomware on your computer, what are they asking for? Cryptocurrency. Right? If somebody calls you in the middle of the night and says your computer has been hacked, turn it on, give me some cryptocurrency. Or, hey, your taxes are late. Uh, you can pay them in cryptocurrency. Right? Yeah, it's always sketchy. Yeah. So, you know, it's not like it, you're, you're, you're walking the line with cryptocurrency. It's not totally legit, even though a ton of people got into it when it's doing its big run up. Uh, there's still risk and volatility, but you know, Dan, when there's risk and volatility, there's money that could be made. So sure. if you feel like rolling the dice, by all means, go in it. And I'd love to hear from our listeners. Uh, do you play in cryptocurrency and what do you think the future is? Well, you know what happened to me, Matt, last year when it was super hot, everyone at work was buying it. And so I thought, oh, you know, I'm going to do a hundred dollar experiment. Yeah, yeah. So I bought um, Bitcoin, I bought um, Ripple and, uh, you know, Ethereum. some of the other ones, Ethereum. Ethereum, yeah. Yeah, and so I just split it 333, three, three, like into thirds, right? $33 each. You yeah. want to guess how much I have now? $33. Twelve dollars. Twelve. Yeah. I turned a hundred dollars into twelve dollars. Hey, at least it was only a hundred dollars and not a hundred thousand. Yeah, I mean, yeah. it's that's one of those things where you need to be rich first, and you need to be okay with losing money. Um, oh yeah. Because that's that's very volatile, like you said, and people do make a lot of money, and I get the feeling that the people that are making the most money are the people that are actually taking the fees when you purchase things with Bitcoin or when you move Bitcoin from place to place. That's it's where the real money just is. died in India. Just, that yeah. guy in India yeah. from Crohn's disease. Look, I know Crohn's disease sucks and I would never wish it on anyone. Never. But I don't know a lot of 30 year olds that are dead from it, do you? I mean it's possible from well, in Canada. You know, I know somebody who had some severe operations and almost died from those operations, and he's doing just fine now. But, um, yeah, like, it's just, why would you go to India if you have complications with growth? You're going to stay, yeah, I, I, that makes no sense. And I'm not saying he didn't, right? And, yeah. you know, if he really is dead, I mean, there's a widow and two chihuahuas, you know, like... <laughs> 
hundred thousand dollars richer. 